If you're thinking this video looks familiar, you're probably right, because I originally uh, released it yesterday, but I made a few mistakes on the sound, so I decided to just do the whole thing again. So, far too many people I've met, uh, particularly during the last 18 months, have been affected by some sort of mental health issue, ranging from very mild anxiety to crippling depression, maybe due to the pandemic, maybe not. So what, you're probably thinking, has this got to do with street photography? Well, in this video, I'm going to explore the relationship between mental health and photography, and in particular, how we can use street photography to improve our mental health. Hello Street Snappers, and welcome to this video, which looks at how we can get some real therapeutic benefits from street photography. This video isn't a diversion which will take this channel in a new philosophical direction. There are people such as Sean Tucker who do this extremely well, and I'll link to his channel below in case you don't know him. And I should also stress that I'm no expert in mental health issues. I'm simply offering a photographer's perspective, and I'm going to suggest a few ideas which are specific to street photography and which could help you if you need a boost. It's been a tough 18 months for many of us, but we've now hopefully seen the worst of the pandemic. We can now re really focus on making some improvements to our mental health, and street photography can provide us with the ideal vehicle for some mental fitness training. Having said that, as I said, I'm no mental health professional, and I offer my thoughts based on many years' experience working as a street photographer, not as a healthcare professional. And if you feel you need professional help, please take it. So it's widely accepted, anecdotally and academically, that the art of photography is good for the mind. We can look on this as a kind of alternative or complementary therapy. It can boost your confidence, improve your memory, calm the mind, alleviate anxiety and reduce stress. But how can we make that work for those of us who are street photographers? Or maybe if we're not street photographers, should we consider trying street photography for the therapeutic benefits it can provide? So how do we go about it? Well, let's start off by just getting ourselves outside. I read somewhere that spending just 20 minutes a day outside can have the same effect as popping an antidepressant pill. And I don't know about you, but if I'm out there shooting the streets, I'm usually out for the whole day. Uh, and just think of the benefits that can provide. But even taking just an hour out of your day can only be good. If you're currently working from home, for example, maybe use your lunch break to get out there and shoot. But make sure you plan it, setting this time aside and staying committed to it. Maybe make it a daily routine. Let it become a habit, something to look forward to. And do the same thing if you have a place of work to go to every day. Build some photography time into your routine so that it becomes a pleasurable habit. Then once you're outside, remove all the distractions from everyday life. And this usually means something as simple as turning your phone off. It's the essential first step to clearing your mind and decluttering. And I know, I know for many of us, this is a really hard thing to do. But honestly, is the world really gonna stop for, if you for a few hours don't check your phone or emails or Instagram or Facebook? And this, of course, has another big benefit in that it will really help you stay in the zone and focus on all the content the street has to offer. Street photography is often very much about the moment, being in the moment and capturing the moment. When you're observing life through the camera, you'll be in the kind of zone which allows you to focus your energy, not on the concerns of your real life, but solely on that moment. And this is really important. Once you become transfixed on a creative pursuit, like street photography, time disappears, you forget yourself, and you become absorbed in the moment. All the bad stuff, the stresses and the anxiety of life, can be put to one side, and you'll emerge from your, from your session feeling calmer and more present than when you began, which can help enormously in many of life's difficult situations. Just think about the whole process of taking pictures, from hunting for your subjects to working with the changing light. 
It all requires absolute focus and concentration. And this whole process of observing, analyzing, and processing information is itself a meditative task, which draws you into a relaxing state. Although street photography is often considered to be a lone pursuit, it certainly needn't be, and the company of others can often help. Spending the day and sharing experiences with other street photographers really helps some people dissipate stress and anxiety. And I guess just talking to people helps whatever your issue or setting. Then we have the, the physiological benefits to consider. And according to a body of research by Professor Denise Park from the University of Texas, photography is a highly cognitive activity. Her research found that participants engaged in digital photography were able to enhance and improve their episodic memory and reasoning skills. And this becomes more relevant as we get older. And I'll pop a, a link to this research below because it's quite an interesting read and well worth a look. So here are a couple of specific tips which I hope will help you. And by the way, we should all be doing this stuff however we're feeling. When you're out shooting the streets, try to take positive, happy images rather than dark images. F photos themselves can be mood stimulants and according to a study called The Connection Between Art, Healing and Public Health, a review of current literature, art therapy can help reduce cortisol, which is a, hu uh, a hormone that causes stress. And photography, of course, is an art form, and simply taking a positive or beautiful picture can help bring on a state of calm or mindfulness. So now it probably isn't the time to focus on shooting dark, depress depressing or negative material. So instead, embrace the happy or the witty subject matter that we often associate with street photography. Whenever you're out shooting, don't rush about, walk slowly. Quite honestly, this is what we as street photographers should be doing anyway, and it's something I try to get all my workshop students to do, irrespective of any mental health issues. Because if you work slowly, you will see so much more of the world around you, you will absorb stuff, and it'll really help you tune in, uh, observe life, make connections. And for me, that's what street photography is all about. Next, how about starting a project? Again, irrespective of any mental health issues, you really should be doing this anyway. Shooting a project will give you a goal, something positive to reach for. From personal experience, I know that if I'm not feeling great, having something to focus on can really help. And absorbing myself in a street photography project may be just the thing to turn my mood around. You'll experience a little more of a feel-good factor for every image you take towards your project and you'll have a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment all the way. And if you're new to the idea of shooting street photography projects, please check out my earlier video and I'll pop a link up here. Connecting with others can be a great way to relax and to bring about positive feelings. And a great way to do this is to shoot street portraits. Once you've got over that initial hurdle of asking someone for a portrait, and you really do need to bear in mind that nine out of 10 people will say yes. Shooting street portraits can be a heartwarming exercise with a real feel good factor. Maybe this will take you out of your comfort zone, initially at least, which in itself will take your thoughts to a different place. Your initial fears will soon fade away. You'll probably find this quite addictive. And this was certainly the case for Brandon Stanton, uh, who you may know was the creator of the, the Humans of New York project. And when Brandon lost his job as a bond trader, instead of applying for other stressful jobs, he threw himself into his personal passion, street photography. This is what he said. When I lost my job, I could, I could suddenly ask myself, what is it that I want to do? It was the complete opposite of what I was doing before, sitting in front of a computer all day. Now I was out in the world, exploring, meeting people, seeing so many beautiful things, having these random interactions and letting my life spill into my experiences. Turning, photography, turning to photography not only brought him a huge amount of personal joy and gratification, 
but also resonated with people all over the world. And his Instagram alone now has about 8 million inspired followers. If you fancy giving street portraits a, a try, do check out my video on this. Again, there's a link up here. It's a, a sort of how-to guide to doing street portraits. Now could be the right time for you to experiment with analog photography and shoot some film. For starters, shooting on film will really slow everything down, letting it become a more thoughtful, mindful process. You won't be constantly checking the back of your camera to see what the image looks like, and that gets pretty stressful sometimes, which means that you'll be able to stay in the moment for longer. Then there's the whole process, the whole workflow of shooting film, which could include developing, scanning, printing your images. It's just a really absorbing uh, and rewarding way to work. And it needn't be expensive if cost is a concern. Buy a cheap film camera, get an old 1970s DSLR, sorry, SLR from, from eBay, even get some expired film and you're ready to go. The only danger is it's easy to get hooked. I find that absorbing myself in photography books can bring about a mindful state. Take a look at some beautiful or clever images, try to understand them, try to get into the photographer's head. Maybe even think how you could produce a similar kind of work. You might even get inspiration for a project, project of your own. But don't just look at the picture books, read some, read some essays on photography, writers like Jeff Dyer or Susan Sontag. And if you're not sure where to start, I've put my recommended Amazon reading list together for you on my website and I'll pop a link to that below. Well, I hope you found that useful and perhaps even therapeutic. For me, one of the great benefits of street photography comes from the artistic or the, the creative endeavor and the ability to express yourself through your picture taking with no pressure, without being judged, is one of the most relaxing things we can do. Provided you don't get sucked into the pressures of pleasing the Instagram algorithm, you can just enjoy it for what it is if you get some great shots from a day's shooting, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. So I will aim to bring you another street photography video in the next few weeks. So please do hit the subscribe button below and also the notification bell. And if you don't already subscribe to my street photography newsletter, I will pop a link below for you. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you again next time. Bye for now.